So this past week, of course, we got these shocking indictments from the DOJ against two RT employees who had of course been running an influence operation on behalf of Russia here in the United States, paying multiple different right-wing influencers, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, apparently to basically help spread Russian propaganda. And the indictments say that these two RT employees were given a, you know, millions and millions of dollars from an unknown entity in Russia. And they were funneling that money to these right-wing influencers who, and then, then, you know, would put out this content that was, you know, kind of pro Russia, but mostly anti-Ukraine and, uh, allegedly, as far as we know, none of these right-wing influencers even knew what was happening. Like they didn't know they were getting paid from Russia. They just knew, Hey, these very nice people are paying me tons of money to say stupid things. So I'm going to keep doing it without even thinking for a moment. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why are my words worth hundreds of thousands of dollars a month? Oh, well, like that should have been a big red flag for these people, but all they saw were dollar signs instead of the red flags. So they were just useful idiots of the Russian regime. Nevertheless, once this information came out, in fact, actually several days after this information came out, Donald Trump went ballistic and he got on truth social and said this. Comrade Kamala Harris and her department of justice are trying to interfere and suppress the election in favor of the Democrats by resurrecting the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax and trying to say that Russia is trying to help me, which is absolutely false. In fact, president Putin would much rather see comrade Kamala Harris in office as he strongly said just this morning, why aren't they looking into Iran, China, and other countries? And more importantly, why aren't they looking at Mark Elias, Mark Pomerantz, and the relationship between Lisa Monaco to Andrew Weissman, crew, and all of the other enemies of the people that had such an effect on the 2020 election and are trying to rig and steal the 2024 presidential election. So ironic watching Lisa Monaco, a figurehead for Weissman and the group of radical left lunatics who had so much to do with the original Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. And now she's at it again, leading AG Merrick Garland down an empty and country destroying path. But like we, we have the evidence, man. <laughs> you're saying a lot of things and you're throwing out a lot of names. You're making a lot of allegations. You're, you're not completing really any of your sentences, but none of it makes any sense because again, just like the cases against you, by the way, we have evidence of these things we know. And we've known for nine years that Russia wants you to be president of the United States. You don't care what Putin does. You give Putin whatever he wants. You are very afraid of Vladimir Putin. You admire him. Sure. You want to be like him. Absolutely. But he also scares the bejesus out of you. So you bow your head and you do whatever he wants you to do. Putin coming out and saying he would prefer Harris as president is to throw people off the scent because he knows all his people just got busted. Like it doesn't take a G you don't need Sherlock Holmes to figure that out for you. Anybody with two brain cells to rub together to start a fire knows that that's what happened, but not Donald Trump. No, no brain cells to rub together there. But here's the thing. As I mentioned, we have known for years that Russia has been helping or wanting to help at least Donald Trump stay and become president. The Mueller report made it clear that yes, Russia did interfere. They interfered in the 2016 election. We know that that happened. That is not a disputable fact. It is just a fact, but here's something else. Trump says, why aren't we looking at the other countries? That is a great question because it brings up a story from the Washington post that was published on August 2nd that got virtually no attention whatsoever. And that was the story about how Egypt and Egypt's dictator wanted to give you $10 million. And for the record, we don't know if they did. All we know is that the dictator of Russia did a massive cash withdrawal of $10 million 
that was placed in very heavy bags, like old school bribery here, several weeks before your inauguration. But prior to them withdrawing that money, putting it into the big bags where we do not know where they went. Prior to that, you made a personal cash infusion into your personal presidential campaign in the exact same amount, which came after you had a meeting with the Egyptian dictator on September 16th of 2016. So you meet with him in September, then you put 10 million of your own money into your campaign. Then a few months later, Egypt takes out $10 million in cash, puts it in big old bags, and we don't know where it went. Now you may think like, okay, well, fair. That's a lot of hearsay. Obviously if something happened, the DOJ, somebody would have investigated it. Aha. They did. The DOJ launched an investigation into this because they do believe that the Egyptian dictator tried to bribe Donald Trump. However, because at the time this investigation was launched, Donald Trump's good buddy, Bill Barr was in charge of the DOJ. He was attorney general. He killed that investigation. That is basically what this report from the Washington post was all about. The fact that this investigation was ongoing and nobody knew about it. Bill Barr then killed it and nobody knew about it but there's a lot of dots that are fairly easy to connect between Donald Trump and Egypt and the $10 million. But we will likely never get answers to that. And of course we do know that once Donald Trump became president of the United States, much like Russia and North Korea, he gave Egypt every single thing that they wanted. So outside countries have of course been attempting to influence Donald Trump since he burst onto the political stage. Doesn't matter if it's Russia, China, of course, giving him all those patents right after he gets sworn in as president of the United States. You know, Trump loves to talk a big game about how China is so bad. We hate China. We don't like them. We have to rein them in. And then he didn't do anything while he was president because of course they gave him everything he wanted and his businesses made millions and millions of dollars in China from China while he was president. Something that also, by the way, Republicans in the house completely didn't even care about as they were looking into, did Hunter Biden get money from China? That SOB in that horrible country. No, but Trump did. And you guys, you guys just didn't want to do anything about that. Okay. Foreign governments want Trump as president. I should say, I should revise that. Um, countries that aren't big fans of the United States want to see Donald Trump as president because they know that he is easy to manipulate. Kim Jong-un played Donald Trump like a friggin' fiddle because he read him so easily and knew how to sweet talk him and just got everything. That's why they support Trump. That's why they're interfering in the election to support Donald Trump. They want him to win because he is the most easily manipulate, uh, easy to manipulate. I should say person that you could have serving as president. They want him back because they know how to take advantage of him. Hi everyone. This here is little Athena and Athena would like to know why you haven't subscribed to fair and balanced yet. So please don't let Athena down subscribe today.